In this lesson, we'll begin our review of Heart of Algebra Concepts. We're in the official PSAT practice test, section three, you know, calculator. Keep in mind there is a progressive order of difficulty. One is the easiest question, they get progressively harder, and then when the grid ends start, the difficulty level resets. Every question, though, is worth the same. Number one, a babysitter earns $8 an hour for babysitting two children and an additional $3 tip when both children are put to bed on time. If the babysitter gets the children to bed on time, what expression could be used to determine how much the babysitter earned? A really common question you'll see on the new test is linear equations set to real life scenario. So let's think about, we know slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, but think about it. We have really two types of variables here. The b is the y-intercept, but this is what I call a flat or fixed amount. And the slope is the variable rate. And so this might be set to, let's say, a cost function where it's $5 an hour, but there's an initial cost for renting the item. So the initial cost for renting it would be when x is 0. And the variable rate would incur once the hours or whatever the unit starts to accrue. So just think about these two very common question type on the new SAT and PSAT. We're told that she earns $8 an hour for babysitting the two children. And X is the number of hours. So we know that the amount she earns based on this variable rate is going to be 8X. And then we also have this $3 tip, which is really just a fixed amount. It doesn't matter how many hours. It's only whether she gets the children to bed on time. And we're told she did get the children to bed on time, so she earned that tip. That's the, fl the flat rate. And that's the answer. It's number one, A. All right, let's do the next algebra question, number three. Which ordered pair x, y satisfies the system of equations above? A very common question type on the new test, system of equations. You'll probably see three, maybe four questions some of which will be in straight equation form like this one. Others might be a word problem. And there are really three ways to solve these types of problems. Number one, elimination. And I prefer elimination when the equations are in equation form like this. And that means you have to manipulate one or both of the equations in order to cancel out one of the variables when you combine them. When you solve for that variable, then you plug into one of the original equations to get the remaining variable really common question type. And so we have these fractions here. I'm going to take this top equation and just multiply. We've got a half and a fourth. I'm going to multiply by four because that will clear both the fractions. We want integers on the top equation. So we're going to end up with 2x minus y equals 40. Now the bottom equation, we're going to multiply by 8, but I'm actually going to multiply by negative 8. And again, it's really a matter of preference, and I'll show you why. So if negative 8, then we get negative x. This is negative 8 times 1, 8. That's going to be plus y. And that's the reason I did it, is so they just cancel it. I know you could have just had negative y and then subtract them, but I just, I've always done it like this. So anyway, there are different ways to solve these problems. No calculator. So 8 times 19, you know, 8 times 20 is 160. We're going to subtract 1, 8. So that'd be 152, negative. And now we just combine the two. So here we're left with one, just single x. These two are going to cancel out. And then we're left with 40 minus 152, that's negative 112. If you're in a hurry, or maybe you're really confident in your problem solving, if you notice, there's only one choice with that. So you could just move on, but let's just uh, confirm it. So what we can do now to confirm we did it right is we're gonna take this x, and we're just gonna plug it into this equation. So that's gonna be negative 112, but this is negative x, so that's gonna be positive 112 plus y, equals negative 152. We're going to subtract 112 from both sides. Y is negative 264. And that is the choice, A. Now we're going to do one last question in this video. Contrast the next question with the one we just did. In a certain game, a player can solve easier or hard puzzles. A player earns 30 points for solving an easy puzzle and 60 points for solving a hard puzzle. Tina solved a total of 50 puzzles playing this game, earning 1,950 points in all. How many hard puzzles did Tina solve? This is another system of equations. So in the last question, we did elimination. I'm going to show you the second method here, and that is substitution. All right, so first we have to get equations for both. And I always like to start with what I call the single variable equation. So we've got the points. These are what I call the variable ones because they're based on how many 
it's 30 times the number of easy, 60 times. Those are sort of the, the one, the variable equations. But what I mean by the single variables is just the total number of puzzles, 50. So that's the first equation I'm going to make. We have just two types of puzzles. We have easy and we have hard puzzles. So I'm just going to label them E plus H equals 50. This is the single variable equation. Now we need an equation for based on the number of points earned. So we know it's 30 times the easy one, so it's going to be 30E. We know it's 60 times the H, and this is 1950. So I'm going to use substitution. You could still use elimination, like in the last method. You could, let's say, multiply this by negative 30. But I'm just going to show a substitution. Substitution means, and I like to start with what I call, again, this is the single variable. There's no coefficient in front of it. And we're going to express, the question's asking for hard puzzles, we're going to express easy in terms of hard. So all we have to do here is just subtract h from both sides. So we know that easy equals 50 minus h. All right, so this is easy in terms of h. And remember, we want to solve for h. So here's an h. So for this easy, we're going to plug that in. That's what we mean by substitution. So we have 30 times, remember the E in terms of H is 50 minus H plus 60 H equals 1950. This is going to be 1500 minus 30 H plus 60 H equals 1950. So I combine the two H's and we're left with 30 H. Subtract 1500 from both sides, we get 450. Divide by 30 and H equals 15 and that is the answer B all right now remember I told you there are three methods I can show you so as long as we're in this video I'm going to show you one more method and this is called the intuitive method and this is the method that I really use it's sort of a non-academic method but I really prefer this if you have a word problem like this with system of equations I think it's a much more efficient way of doing it so see if you can follow along and I just think it's much easier than the method I just showed you all right, so we know that there are two types of puzzles. Remember, we start with the single variable. We've got total puzzles, 50. We've got 30 points for an easy puzzle, 60 points for a hard. So what you're going to do first with this intuitive method is you're going to take 50, which is the total number, and think about what's the minimum number of points that are earned. The minimum number, 30, all right? They all earned at least 30. They earned 30 or 60. So just multiply all 50 by 30, and we get 1,500. Now, this is not the answer, obviously, but it's a true statement. They all earned at least 30. But we're told the true number is 1950. So let's take the difference between the minimum and the true number, and that's 450. And now the difference between the 30 and the 60, right, is this is sort of the interval between the minimum and the maximum, which is the only other variable. The, the interval between these two is 30. So we have to see how many intervals of 30 to make up to get these 450 points. So all you do is take this 450, you divide it by the difference, and that is the answer. So I really think that's a much better method if you can follow that. Either method will work, even elimination, but you should be proficient in these types of problems because they will appear on the new test.